You're listening to the What is a Woman podcast, hosted by the Catholic Family Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the What is a Woman podcast. My name is Holly, and as always, I'm joined here by my mother, Mandy. Um, we're happy to be back for another episode, and we're going to start off by saying, Jesus, meek and humble of hearts, make our hearts like unto thine. So um, interesting enough, as you ladies know, we always pre-record these podcasts. So you're listening to this on Thursday, but my mom and I are sitting here recording on Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday. So I wanted to begin this podcast by wishing you all um, a very blessed and fruitful Lent. Um it's funny because, you know, <laughs> when you see secular posts or even posts from novice ordos and they're all like, happy Lent. And you're like, uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, it's just, you just, those things don't go together. It's not, you know, happy Lent. You say have a blessed Lent, right? right. So it's. Well, well, we hope to, we hope, hope to obtain the fruits of Lent. Like we yeah. hope to benefit from, from Lent. Like, we hope to get right down deep into the the bottom of our soul and pull out all the lessons and, yeah. and really conform our heart. Right. So, I mean, I do personally, as a Catholic, I do look forward to Lent. Yeah. I do. Well, like, I, I, I think Lent is a, you know, because it's funny, like, I mean, I know we always strive to be better and we should always strive to be better and become saints regardless if it's Lent or not. Right. But I I just like Lent is like the, you have that. Um, Game on. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I hate to say it like that, but it's like, you know, now it's time to get serious, you yeah, know, like, on. and I, again, we should be like that all year, but Lent really is a time Somehow, to just. As uh, St. Augustine says, we forget that we, we forget, have wet. It's, yeah. It's just, it's, it's just because Ash Wednesday comes and then for me, I'm like, I'm always like, okay, here we go. Right. You know, like. And um, the readings for today for Ash Wednesday um, tell us reading to do from that. Reading somewhere. Uh, the gospel. And the oh, gospel, okay. Okay. So. Um, tell us to be happy and joyful and actually, you know, to um, keep it to ourselves kind of like. Don't come in like, oh my gosh, I'm so suffering. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. And you know what? That's so funny. I don't know where I saw it recently. I think it was in the set of a contest Facebook group. There was a post a priest had made or somebody had shared it. And it, it did say along those lines. Now, remember when you're fasting, you sometimes you can walk around with like a scowl on your face or you're miserable this is or you're horrible. hangry, quote unquote, hangry because <laughs> you're fasting. You're like, it's Lent. But we should remember to keep in mind to fast and and suffer joyfully right and my, not my, make it like it's a problem I you know no i don't fast anymore because yeah my mom doesn't she's i'm of age of age <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and i thought i i used to be very critical of my parents well because my <laughs> grandpa god rest his soul yeah. <laughs> i was like what you can't give up <laughs> anything <laughs> You'd be sitting there, you're everybody's fasting, and he'd be like, "Oh, you want some peanuts? Oh, you're fasting. Sorry, <laughs> in its mouth." <laughs> and you had, you would have to know my grandpa. It was his personality. He was very funny and lighthearted, and <laughs> yeah. and very like he wasn't doing it maliciously. Right. You know, it's just that. But I, I, and I thought to myself, "Well, I'm certainly, I'm certainly going to continue to fast." And now and and you're I not. Don't. Oh, the church. <laughs> I'm like, okay, who am I to argue with the, the church? church. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and but mostly because I'm going to tell you, as you get older, you have so many other, other issues, crosses and crosses, strife and, and health troubles. problems, yeah. and there's just so and much going you know, on. The, and, and fasting, you know, our holy mother, the church, she knows that. She knows that. She's you a know, wise, wise <laughs> mother. Yes. And we should never doubt her. Yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So uh, we're here at the beginning of Lent and hopefully we, we will add some um, some food, good for thought. food for thought to your Lent. And yeah. uh, if you're here listening, um, we're grateful that you're here listening. So what are we got on the docket today? Well, I did want to I did want to talk about uh, a story. Okay. We had last week we told a Lent story. Yes. Um, and it had a very glorious ending. Uh huh. Right. And it was really wonderful. And this and this and this is a, our, a personal life story. Yeah. Right. 
So the following Lent to come, the next year, the next year. we're going to live another Lent. Mm-hmm. Exactly the same. Practically and just, exactly just, the same. Just a quick uh, preface for those, if in, just in case you didn't catch last week's episode, we basically, it was the story of my great, great aunt who had a deathbed conversion. During, at 97 years old during um during well, she whole, died on palm sunday the, pro, the whole process basically started at the beginning of lent, lent and she and died it ended on palm sunday right during, with a deathbed conversion at 97 years yeah, old on palm sunday yeah right so our personal our family is is um going to live another personal tragedy, tragedy at lent at lent practically exactly to the date the same yeah but the outcome is going to be is not going to be as wonderful right so mm -hmm. i thought you know we can't share the that, wonder and that the... great story without sharing the really really tragic one right right because you know uh, i mean and i was just thinking about something here um we're having a nice storm today by the way <laughs> like yeah. and you know it's ash wednesday now I don't. I think we mentioned it at Christmas time, but we had a blizzard the two days of Christmas, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. People couldn't get to mass. Yeah, there was people that couldn't make it to midnight mass. Now we Christmas. have people that come from two hours as away, as far as two, as far as two hours away, almost two and a half. Like Ash Wednesday, that church will be packed, packed. like packed to the rafters and overflowing. Yeah, right. And the good Lord has decided to send us. A nice, nice storm, storm. <laughs> you know we've had what? we've had days of yesterday like, was plus seven. seven yeah like you know i, I was know. outside in a t-shirt yeah and now and today, today because it's ash wednesday and yeah. everybody wants to go to church and you have to say to yourself lord do you not want everybody to go to church <laughs> do you not want everybody to start their lent off with it. a bang of ash wednesday you know yeah i mean the ice hasn't started my brother said we're expected to get 20 inches yeah 20 inches it I'm hasn't started the yet so it sounds, it's just snowing but it's just snowing right now so i don't know if that's going to happen i don't know if if uh people are going to be kept away i don't we know don't what's going to happen but i just find it always ironic because you think that god would pave the way mm -hmm. you know oh yeah everybody needs to go to church i'll make it a balmy seven and you can all get there no excuses well, nothing holding you back it's the same as the first fridays right you know you do you do eight first fridays mm -hmm. right and then something happens for your ninth one right and you didn't you know it's preventing you from just complete and then you got to start all over i know that's happened to many people oh, it's happened to me it's happened to me yeah i actually um, I kind of gave up on first Friday. <laughs> I just go. And if I happen to, and I say, oh, Lord, if I happen to have made them, then good. But, you know, if I, <laughs> well, you know, it gets a little bit. Uh, I know, I know. But it's just like, it's, it, it's just, I feel like, you know, it's that, you know, you have to really want it. Yeah. Well, even when you, you know, really want it. And even it. if you really want it, sometimes not. It just doesn't happen. It just know? doesn't happen. It's like... It's, and you got to start all over again. But I mean, anyways, regardless, Ash Wednesday is not a holy day of obligation. It's not a holy day of obligation. But everybody, wa every Catholic wants to start their you want to Lent start off your, you by want going to, start to Ash your Wednesday. Lent, your Lent off. You know, you want those ashes on your head. Yeah. You want it to start. I know everybody in our house got up this morning. Thou art dust and unto dust thou shalt return. It has begun. It has begun. Yeah. Right? You know, but anyway... So it began for us this year. Um, well, actually, after this particular year, we got to be like, oh, no, it's Lent. I'm going to bed and I'm not waking up until it's over. Yeah. Because it was always like God was throwing everything he had at you and he, you were going to learn something. Yeah. Right? And um, this particular year, it was very, very tragic. Um, 2008. 2008. So yeah. our aunt died in 2007. And seven. Now, if you remember the previous story, how it started was Ash Wednesday came, and the following Friday, she fell. Yeah. Like two days after Lent started, she fell. So 2008, Ash Wednesday comes, and two days later, I get a phone call. 
Mm-hmm. Right? Now, I'm going to say something before I get into this story. Um, I had a premonition in the summertime after my aunt had died. And uh, I, luckily, I told my daughter, I said, not you, my youngest daughter. Mm-hmm. I said, your dad's going to die. And yeah. I, I said, I better get life insurance. Oh, my goodness. You know, and because I, I looked at him and because I, I thought I'm going to be destitute if he dies. Mm-hmm. Right. And and of course, I told her and she remembered this. Right. And I thought I thought he was going to die of cancer. I mm-hmm. thought he was sick. Yeah. So. Um, so anyway. So we're at home. We're OK. So let's fast forward. Ash Wednesday. Uh, we're back to Ash Wednesday. We're back. 2008. 2008. And so the Friday after Ash Wednesday, and I can't, I'm trying, I was trying to remember exactly. Were you home? Um, no, I didn't live at home. Okay, right. So it was, must have been your sisters. Yeah. And I can't remember exactly if we were praying the rosary or I got the phone call and then we prayed the rosary. Right. I can't remember, one or the other. But anyway, the phone call rings and I get a message from the police. My husband has been in a car accident and yeah. he's in jail. Yeah. He he was driving, he was drunk. Right? And driving, yeah. And he was drunk and he was driving. And he hurt somebody. Yeah. And so and of course this was a Friday. He was in jail for the whole weekend, I believe. I was could, he the yeah, whole weekend? I yeah. couldn't get him out till the Monday. Okay. I then he had to appear before the court. Right. And all this. And so of course he hurt somebody pretty bad. Like they're in a wheelchair. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So, anyway, he drove through a stop sign is what he had done. So, this is now Friday. After Ash Wednesday. After Ash Wednesday. So, he comes home and he's devastated. Like, he is absolutely devastated because he knows he's hurt somebody. Yeah. He knows, you know, and he actually feels like his life is over. Mm -hmm. I... I was not so devastated. Like, I was not concerned at all. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I, I was like, in my mind, I was like, you knew this day was going to come. Right. Because you can't keep you've doing something. You've been dancing over. on this line for too you, long. You've been dancing on this line for too long. And yeah. this was eventually going to, to happen. happen. Yeah. Right. And so I was, um, I, I wasn't upset or angry because he was too upset with himself he was too upset with himself right Right. and he knew he was in a lot of trouble Trouble. yeah like he was he was in big big trouble he thought and we live on a farm he thought we were going to get sued yeah we were going to lose our farm yeah that he had destroyed completely and 100 percent destroyed his life Mm -hmm. now a little bit of backstory for this for you all here um my husband this my husband was always suicidal. Mm-hmm. The minute things went wrong and south, it was always the end of the world. Right. So I had lived with that my whole life, right? I had lived with that my whole life. And the one thing that I had taken away from living with somebody who is always suicidal is that you have to know. No. And actually, it was about two Easter's before this when he was, you know, I can't remember what was going on, but he was going to, you know. Life is over. He was going to end it. Yeah. And I sat, I stood there and it was Easter because I'm going to tell you, funny things happen during Holy Week too. Like God loads it on. Mm -hmm. I mean, at at least he does for me and I can't believe that I'm special, (laughs) you know, that he's not loading Loading it it on on for for everybody else else too, you know? Yeah. And, um, and so I stood there and I said to myself, you, if he ever follows through with this. Mm-hmm. you have to know that there was nothing you could have done about it to, to, stop, to stop it because I had tried everything yeah you know he's in the pit I get down to the pit yeah you know he you know okay that didn't work okay okay everything's okay like I try I tried to come at it from like every possible mm-hmm. angle yeah all the time mm-hmm. you know to make to try to get him like okay this is not the end of the world. Yeah. Life will go on. We will survive. Yeah. You know, all this kind of stuff, right? 
And so, so that's the backstory. So this is nothing new. This is nothing new to us that this is the end of the world. Right. So now we're going to go into a deep, deep depression. Mm-hmm. Right. And, um, and of course, I was, I was kind of relieved because I was, I was, he was fine. He finally saw the errors. The of magnitude his... of the problem he had. Yes. Like this is why you, this happened and that, you know, he was going to wake up and be like, okay, I got to change. And I kept saying, it doesn't matter. Let them take it all. Yeah. I didn't care. Yeah. I said, let them take it all. If you, as long as you know. No, that this has to stop. Or... This has to stop and that we can fix. I said, we yeah. can fix anything. It doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. That, that was my attitude. And, of, but. What I didn't realize was he was going, he was spiraling and he was mm-hmm. going into despair, right? Yeah. So here we are, it's the beginning of Lent and this is basically how we're spending Lent. Right. Right, that he's in despair. I'm I'm working, I, I'm babysitting elderly people who can't be left alone. Mm-hmm. So I'm actually on a 48 hour shift. I'm gone, was it, was I doing 48 hours? Gone two days, no, no, I was just gone like, one day and then, and then like it wasn't 48 hours that that came later but i was i was away from home like quite often too overnight mm-hmm. because i was babysitting elderly people so anyway um but anyway so he's spiraling out of control but i'm thinking oh he's i'm oh he finally sees you know i remember at one point he um some hockey players had um had done something bad because they were drunk in a bar and he's watching this on the news and he threw something at the television because he said, stupid morons. He said they have their whole life and they're ruining it because of alcohol. Wow. Yeah, right? So he knew, he knew, he knew the cost of alcohol, yeah. right? So anyway, but so I was grateful. I was like, grateful, finally, if this is what it takes, yeah. finally, right? But I was wrong because he was just going deeper and deeper. Mm-hmm. And um, eventually, it was Passion Week. So yeah. we've gone all through Lent. And Passion Week, I'm babysitting this woman. And I get a phone call from him. This is it. I'm killing myself. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm like, oh, don't, be, don't be crazy. Like, yeah. don't, don't be stupid, you know. And so the phone goes dead. Mm-hmm. And I, I try to dial back. And I try to dial back. And I can't get through. And, I, and then I'm looking on a pan. I, then I start to panic. Mm-hmm. And I legitly had to leave the person I was babysitting, mm-hmm. get in the car, and drive home. Right. And um, and my um, at halfway there, I had a cell phone. I called my parents and I said, "I think he's done something." So my parents, they lived closer. They got to the house before I did. Yeah. And they go, "No, it's okay. He's just on the couch. He's sleeping. He's sleeping." Yeah. But they couldn't get in the house. They were only looking in the windows because the doors were locked. So I came and unlocked the door and I came in and sure enough, no, he had shot himself. Yeah. So, you know, I called 911 and the police came and, you know, and then, you know, and this is, what is this? We're coming into Holy Holy Week. Week. It was, it was during Passion Week. Yeah. Or not Passion Week. It was before the Passion. It was was right before the Passion. Right before Passion Week. Right before the Passion, right? So here we are. Previous Lent, we just spent this glorious Lent mm-hmm. where we've seen God in all his glory do a deathbed conversion, mm-hmm. our prayers, our sacrifices, everything Life has been Lifelong prayers answered. Lifelong prayers answered. And then the following year, what would appear? Lifelong prayers, prayers. Not answered. Not answered. Because, you know, my mom and I were talking before this podcast and she was saying, you know, we're going to talk about this. And I said, you know, yeah, it's funny that you say that because I prayed for my Annie Grace. I said my last podcast, our last podcast, I prayed for my Annie Grace every Sunday, every day. Yes. I prayed hard for her. I prayed 10 times harder for my dad. Yeah. 10 times harder. Right. Those and so how do you now sit here and say, I, those prayers weren't answered? Those prayers weren't answered, right? You know, yeah. like, and you have to, now you have to wrap your head around your religion. Religion, yeah. That says he may be in hell. Right. Right? hmm And so, and that, and that you've been praying, I mean, every first communion. Yeah. I remember every first, every time, you know, when they say. Every you, commemoration of the living. He, his name was always the first. Always. 
Yes, and mine too. Yeah. And I'm sure your siblings. Oh, sure. Yeah. So here you have to adjust yourself. And I know a lot of people, a lot of you guys are out there and you're going, my prayers are never answered. answered. Like I have this this huge, huge prayer. Yeah. And it seems to go unanswered, right? Yeah. So what happens when you see that your prayers are not answered, right? Right. Well, there's two things that happen. You either get very bitter and very angry and you you turn towards hating God, which happens quite regularly. Yeah. You see that with death quite regularly. Yeah. Or you go to the source himself, God. For consolation. For consolation. Yeah. And you say, why? You yeah. You ask, why? And I mean, you don't you won't get an answer well you do well you do but i mean like it's not like you're like why god and god tells you why right, <laughs> you know right. no but i went to the books right yeah i just i needed i needed the consolation i needed you to tell me this was mm-hmm. this was you know okay yeah i mean first of all i should also mention when he died he had a rosary in his pocket and a green scapular and you know what's funny is um he always carried a green scapular. He always it carried the green wallet. scapular and he always carried the rosary. Yeah. He always carried it. Yeah. Right. And I and there's another thing I have to tell you too, because this was a very rocky relationship. So there was times when when he was close, what I would say he was close to converting. Converting? Yeah, you yeah. know, where he saw that this is where the answers yeah. were. Were. Right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden and I I almost kind of um, was anxious when that happened because always what followed up that was like the devil came in, in like and it was like and nope and just yanked them back and it was like I'm gonna I'm gonna use the word possessed yeah it was nasty okay so well I mean and they, they say it there's nothing more there's nothing the devil hates more than to lose a soul right so if he sees yeah you know, then he pour, he pours it on ten times harder. Right, right, and and unfortunately, in my husband's case, he always seemed to win. Well, because he was weak. Right, but anyway, so I went I went to the books and to the yeah. prayers and to give me some consolation, give me some yeah. answers. Now I have to wrap my religion, religion around, around this. this. Yeah, last year it was all you know glory and. Roses, roses and, and everything is wonderful and the good lord is wonderful. wonderful but you know now we're having a nice storm yeah and it appears like all the prayers were for nothing yeah all the sacrifices were for nothing mm-hmm. but it's not true no it's not true i mean first of all i mean he had a rosary and a scapular in his pocket so you have to say to yourself well Everything I believe tells me Our Lady wouldn't abandon him. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's it's been said, all you need to do is ask Our Lady. Right. You know? She's not, I don't believe for one second that Our Lady would be like, not today. Not today. <laughs> you know? Right? You know? Like. And there was, there was, I did lots of read. I read, I read some books. I mean, I don't even know what and I, I And I would do. just like to say this because, you know, this is my father here. And, um, you know, I had a very hard time coping with this for a long time. Mm -hmm. And um, a priest told me, a priest told me, because I I went up to this priest and I said, how am I going to live my life knowing that my dad is in hell? He said, you can't say that. He said, you cannot say it. He said, don't ever say that. He said, you don't know. Mm -hmm. You have no idea. He said, don't ever say that again. And he said, you don't know what happened. And like, first of all, you never know when, no one was here, so right. we don't know when he actually did die. Right. Right? And secondly, um, and then he told me the story of, and you know what I'm blank. I think it was the Cure of Ours. I don't know. St. Yeah. Jean-Marie Vianney. Um, a woman came to him. I, I might get this story wrong, but anyways, it was either a woman or a man. I'm pretty sure it was a woman. Came to him and said, my husband killed himself and now he's in hell and da, da, da. And she couldn't cope with it. And he actually had a vision. Mm-hmm. And this this soul was not in hell. Right. He, com- he killed himself, but there was a time in between him dying and him actually killing himself where he begged for help or, mm-hmm. or was sorry and had a perfect act of contrition. Right. You know, so you just... 
I just, that is, you know, that is that one small comfort Uh that I am given. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, there's a lot of comforts. There's a lot of comforts. Like that, you know, I don't know. And it is not the, it is not the end. You don't know. You know, I mean. You have no clue. Right. Right. And there, there was a lot like, I mean, and we don't even know how, um, uh, how, you know, how, what's the word I'm looking for? Co- culpable? Culpable? How Couple, responsible? Can, yeah. Uh, let's, let's forget that, that word. Because we can't seem to say it. But how responsible <laughs> he was, was. Right? Yeah. Because there was also, when I was reading, I started reading books on, on exorcisms. Mm-hmm. And right, you know, and people who are possessed and the level of how much does the devil own you right yeah and so how much you're responsible for for your actions and there's like and the more you read the more you get into that there's so much more at play here yeah there's just so much more like i don't know i I mean i don't know that he was i don't know that he wasn't and you know what anything and and you know what i i take comfort i do take comfort in the fact that i don't know yes so every day every day i still pray right and it, and you know it, it's been said to me before by a priest. You know, do not think for one second that your prayers are wasted, because even if you know, let's just say I can't even say it, but you know, um, those prayers will go where they are needed. And, and God is and God knows. And God is perfectly just. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and the other thing too about the laws of the church, right? That they're for us. We're Catholics. We know the laws. They're not for God. They're not for God. They're not for God. God can do whatever he wants. Right. So Whatever he, he wants. God's and mercy I, is for God. And, and he can put that mercy wherever he wants. And you know what? That is the beautiful. That is the. I know charity is first. Right. Like of the greatest of these is charity. Uh-huh. But I really do love the hope. Yes. Like I cling to that hope. That is the, for me the hope of our religion that is what anchors me, mm-hmm. you know, that I can sit here and I can hope and I can still pray for somebody. You could pray for anybody, yeah, anybody, and God will do what he needs to do with those prayers. And you can just hope in him mm-hmm. and you can trust in him and you can have faith in him that he is at the helm of the ship and he will do what right, right. needs to be done with those right, prayers, right. you know, so. And his mercy is that great. So I know that Jody had asked us to pray for her, her grandmother, her grandmother and she, she has been added Catholic, to my prayers, you know, because so, there's a lot of us that have a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of ice storms out there. Yeah. And God, God is, you know, he's, he's the ruler of divine providence. Mm-hmm. We don't, I mean, to me, it was the most bizarre thing. Two lengths in a row, back to back, practically yeah. the exact same thing. And I don't believe in coincidences. No. Not for one red hot second. You know, it's all part of a plan. Yeah. Right? And I and I know too, right, the other thing too, that I have um, four children, right? Mm-hmm. And after he, the one, the one thing that I did read, I said that God denies the saints nothing. Mm-hmm. Right? So I said... Well, then I got to be a saint. Then I got to make myself a saint. I got to make myself <laughs> if that's a saint. The, if that's the case. If that's the key here. If that's the key. And we know that from St. Patrick. I, a friend of mine had, um, St. Patrick demanded from God the salvation of Ireland. Demanded. Really? Yes. <laughs> I read it in a book. I remember yeah. she posted it on Facebook, right? Yeah. She said, he said, well, how about we just save this many? No. Uh, no. We save oh. all. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, how about this many? No. <laughs> We save them all. Save them all. Yeah. Right. And like this is this is the other thing that you have to take into consideration is the power of the saints. Yeah. You know, and I know that we're all sitting here, and I know our story's a a little bit rough. You know, rough. Mm Mm-hmm. And um and but I know all you people got rough stories. But and but who Saint Dymphana's story wasn't rough. (laughs) So like, you know rough? what I mean? Yeah, it's a like you rough. want to talk about horrible fathers. Yeah. You know, like, right. I mean, just making a comparison there. You know, no. I'm not saying my father was anything like her father, but I'm just saying, like, you know, that's rough. Yes. That's a rough story. That's a rough story. You, you know? know, like, right. So, and we know that y'all, you guys all have rough stories. Yeah. And yeah. just because 
you don't get. Nobody, nobody. Your deathbed conversion and all the bells start ringing. And, and we all, we, I don't think there is a person on, a Catholic, sorry, I shouldn't say person. I don't think there's a Catholic on this earth that doesn't have one person in their family. Right. That they're praying hard for. Hard. You know, that they're like, many. God, please help this person, you right. know? Yeah, if not many. Right. You know, I have, I have many, many that I pray for. Yes. You know? And, um, and you know, that's And job. sometimes you don't. Sometimes Sometimes you don't, it feels like that prayer wasn't answered. But it's always answered. But it is always answered. And that's why we Just wanted to share. Just because we don't see this. And that's one of the things, too, that after your dad died, the first thing I said to him, I said, well... First thing now, you said to who? Your dad, after he died. Oh, oh, you were talking. Because okay. this, yeah, because now you can be more connected to somebody in death than you can be in life. Right. Because I said to him, well, now you know the truth. Yeah. Right? And I That's said. That's true. I said, now You've you argued know with me. You've argued with me our whole lives. Our whole lives. And now, and now you know the truth. You know the truth more than I know the truth. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I never thought of it like that. Yeah. So now, and sometimes, you know, I said, and sometimes I used to go, because a friend of mine also said to me too, um, she said, watch your kids. She said, because, you know, when a suicide happens, the devil comes in like that. The kids are really, are really, you know, he comes yeah. in like a roaring lion. Unfortunately, <laughs> well, Ava was born the following year. Yeah, my daughter was born the following year yeah you know so um and you all know my sordid tale you know, we <laughs> well it's available know. here on the catholic so, family podcast so there's more there's always more, more to everything yeah than what you see is going on and well I, and and you know what's funny is i i'm not when i say this i'm not blaming my dad in any way shape or form i made my own path yeah but you know that was a really tough year Oh, it was really tough. After that, like, it was just, like, I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what to, you know, like, it was... Everybody lost a little bit of their marbles. Everybody lost their marbles. Like, it was... You know, and, and my friend was right. She said to me, watch your kids. But, I mean, there's nothing you can do. There's yeah, nothing what can you, you can except do. Except for pray. Except for pray. Which pray is everything. Pray and sacrifice. And that's everything you that. can do. We may have said that. It's everything you can do, The right? pseudo name of this podcast, Prayer and Sacrifice. <laughs> prayer and Sacrifice, Is everything. Right? So, I mean, and I used to pray and I, I, and I would go to the graveyard. I used to go to the graveyard multiple times. Like, all the time. Like, I I mean, and I used, to, I used to think in my head, if anybody saw me, they would think I was really, really grieving. Yeah. But it was it was sacrificing. Yeah, I would totally go there. say prayers, throw holy water around, yeah. say more prayers, and then I'd go up and I'd say, "Okay, you made this mess. Now you help these kids." Yeah, you know, because as you know, people from purgatory yeah. certainly are more yeah. helpful to us than anything, right? Right, right. And right. eventually, eventually, everybody came back mm -hmm. with a. We'll see. Everybody? Or you mean me, just me? No, well, I mean, your brother, he was out west. Yeah, yeah. And your sisters were here. Everybody got a little loopy. Yes, yes, no, we Everybody all... Everybody got a little loopy. I mean, they yeah. didn't, you know, as I said, you fully left the church. I fully left. Nobody else fully Nobody left. Nobody else fully left, but they... But the devotion and the... The the dedication. The, the dedication, sorry, is the word I'm looking for, was a little lacking. Was a little lacking. They were yeah. using the religion more like a ball and chain. Right. I have to do this. Yeah. Because I'm too scared not to. Uh, I mean, that's what you're saying. I mean, say. well, and you know what? That's the, the other thing. That was why it was so hard to try to cope and deal with the... For, well, first of all, you're dealing with the death of a parent, for starters. And then you're dealing with that kind of death. Yeah. And you've been told your whole life that those who do this act... Yeah. Perish in eternal flame forever. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and then you're sitting there and you're like, okay, really? Like, I have to deal with the death of my father, but I also have to think this, too? Right. But I... I you know, I went loopy and I went off the rails. And, you know, when I came back and then I was talking to some priests and I thought, I'm not going to think that way. No. I'm not going to think that way. I, I refuse to. I refuse to believe. I absolutely refuse to believe. That those prayers were for nothing. That those prayers were for nothing. Mm -hmm. How I was 20, 
How old was I? 23 or 22 when dad died. So I refuse to believe that almost 22 years yes. of prayers mm -hmm. were for absolutely nothing. So, okay. So I think the reason that we're sharing this with you all is so that you know and you keep up the hope. Yeah, don't let the hope don't because don't. you don't get the miracles or you don't. don't get the glorious deathbed conversions or you don't you don't get the oh he's converted you know i mean because like let's be real let's be real for a minute if you don't think for one second if you keep up the hope and you keep up the faith and the prayers and the dedication you don't think you're going to get that glory in heaven yes you don't think that you're going to, like, isn't that the end goal? That, is that end one goal. day that we will get that glory in heaven? Mm -hmm. You know, the when we come face to face with our Lord, mm -hmm. we don't want that glory there? Right. I'd rather have that glory there than here. Exactly. There's no glory here. I mean, there's, there's it's it's minimal and it's, it, it's fleeting. It's fleeting is it's the fleeting. word, you know, yeah. but that's forever. That's forever. So you have to keep up the hope because you have to get there. Right. You know, you have to get to that glory. Mm -hmm. And we don't know what glory is awaiting us there. No. You know, well, hopefully we get there. Right. You know that. And so we have to keep the prayers. We have to keep praying. We have to keep the hope. Exactly. So that we can get it when we and get if there. if we don't, who will? will. That's right. You know? <laughs> so, and it's just, it was, it just really, it struck me too when I saw that comment from Jody. And, and you know, I, I feel you. I feel your... Uh -huh. about your grandmother you know yeah. that you didn't it was sad when you we were telling this great story about uh -huh. our aunt and you know and your grandma and i just wanted to say you know we i added your grandmother to my prayers so um just don't lose that hope jody don't lose the hope and what i always and said keep to praying you, for your the grandmother one thing that i always said to you like you were gone so and i know yeah. there's a lot of women out there with their their kids who are gone yeah right and that's that's just that's just a heartbreak mm-hmm and when you were gone, I had to adjust myself that you may never come back. back. And I used to say, I'm just going to do the prayers. And I'm going to do the sacrifices. And when we're dead, you're going to know. Oh, I did them. I did them. Yeah. Right. And, then, and, you know, and I carried on. And so this is why it's just so important. But I did come back. But you did. Yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness for me. <laughs> Thank goodness for you. But also too, and I and I, I just mean I'm for myself every day. I'm like, think whatever graces and and uh, wonderful blessings were offered for me. Yeah. I'm grateful for those because you know what's funny when I left, I didn't know what I know now. Right. You right. know what I mean. So when I think about that, I'm like, e. That would have been bad for you, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway. But. So those are our two Lents back to back. And so this is why um, it's Lent. I'm it's Lent. to the bed and I'm never coming, coming out. Up. No, that's where it's an exaggeration. Yeah. But we, I'm always prepared and I always say, Lord, what will you teach me this year? Yeah. What, what onion will you peel and, away? And you know what? You know what? The other thing about Lent that I want to say is... Um, you know, uh, every year I give up, I mean, I don't really listen to music, but I give up any form of joyful music. Yeah. Like, you know, even when I'm listening to, I love, I love listening to the singing nuns, but I don't play their, like, Oh God of Loveliness album. I don't play, you know, yeah. I just listen to their album at the cross. Uh -huh. And I'm telling you, if you, when I'm doing the dishes, I put on at the cross and you listen to that sorrowful music it slows everything down. Yeah. It does. Like you, you you know, it just slows everything down and it puts you at a very um, slow pace where you can really sit back and say, let me offer up and make as many sacrifices as I can. You know, you deny yourself that small comfort or that, you know, whatever. And it just, it, it, I think it sets the right tone and the right pace for Lent. Right, right. You know what I mean? Like, there is a reason why there's the discontinuance well, you know was, of the Alleluia. You know what was funny? I, this is, remember I bought an Advent CD. I thought, I, bet I should have some Advent music. And I bought the Advent CD, and it came after Christmas. Yeah. And I thought, well, I bought it. I better listen to it at least once. And I put it on to listen to it, and I couldn't listen to it because it was Christmas. 
Yeah. I was like, this is too sad for me. I just, yeah. I can't even like, get through they, it you know, there is a time and a place for these things. Right. And now is the time and now for is the, the time. for the sorrow and you the. You know, and the Holy Mother knows. Yeah. She knows exactly what we need. And we need to, you know, just embrace that. And, and you know, Lent is, I mean, yes, it's telling you, okay, it's time to really ramp up, but it's also telling you it's time to really slow down, yes. I think. Well, it's slow down it's, to what's important. Slow down and really figure out what's important yeah. for the next 40 days. And then hopefully continue that after. Right. <laughs> you know? But I that but that's to me. That's why I love Lent. Mm -hmm. I do. I really do love Lent. I and I'm gonna try I decided I was gonna try to do the stations of the cross every Friday at church. If I can't make it to church, then at least do them at home because I really want to anyways, yeah. So we uh just wanted to share that with you all. I know it was a little dark and deep. <laughs> For our light and airy podcast, but it is Lent. It is Lent. It is so Lent. We did go. We did go dark and deep. Okay. Nothing so is as dark and deep as Passion Week. That's right. <laughs> and we're not there yet, but we will be there soon. So should we just delve a little bit in our book for the last twenty minutes here of our podcast? Let's see. Yeah, we're we're, we're talking about the we're talking about the religious life. So um, I think we'll just read a little bit here and then we'll um, go ahead. So still on chapter six of the mission and duties of young women. So quote, but it is not a desire to enjoy these advantages that ought to determine a female to make choice of the religious life. She should entertain higher views and propose to herself before everything else, the glory of God, the salvation of her soul and the good of her neighbor. End quote. Right. So, uh, and we kind of dived right in there in the middle of something, but before this, which she didn't read, the pro paragraph before is talking about all the advantages of being in the convent. Right. Right. And Did that, we read that last week or no? I think we touched on we it. We touched on it. I didn't it, yeah. actually want to bother going over it because, I mean, it talked a lot. Of, it's just a couple of paragraphs. Right. It's about, you know, that um, there's no tyranny in the convent. Right. Right. Because the mother superior always changes. Right. So, you know, you could be leader one day and serving And then the you're next. serving the next. So, yeah. you know, like you have, you always keep in mind, right? It always kind of rotates. But um, but anyway, so what what it's talking about there is is the advantages of being in the convent. But that we can't just go, well, this is the greatest place to be, so this is where I'm going to be, mm -hmm. right? That, that you have to um, first seek the glory of God. What's best for the salvation of your soul and what's best good for your neighbor, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's a general practice in life right, right. there. Right, yeah. Like whether you're, going whether you're the, a nun or not. Whether you're the mm -hmm. nun or the not. I mean, yeah. nun or not. Did that come out right? <laughs> no, it <laughs> didn't. It sounded weird. <laughs> but anyway, so, so, I mean, everything we do should be for the greater glory of God. God. Number one. Number the one. Make a listen. Soul. The salvation of our soul and what's best for our neighbor. I was thinking about that little saying, um, God first, other second, self last. Mm -hmm. uh, that I got that, I saw a little clip once from the Duggars. <laughs> and that's what they taught their kids. And I was like, why didn't I teach my, my kids, kids that? that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. God first, other second, second self last. last. But according to this, it's a little bit backwards. Because it's, it's God first. God first, salvation of your soul, second, and then your others. Yeah, but... Um, I think that comes that comes back to you know the every time we say you know you can't expect to change other people if you're not a saint like you have to be a saint yourself right you know so you have to be worried about the salvation of your soul at all times at all times and I think the other saying you know God first other second self last that's more of like if you're talking like well, self denial you know I guess it's Protestantism yeah yeah you know so they they always. Um, that's that's what makes Protestantism fluffy. Yeah. And Catholicism so, deep. Deep. <laughs> right? Yeah. Glory of God. Mm -hmm. Salvation of your soul. Good of your neighbor. Okay. okay. There, quote, continue on. So reading on, quote, Before taking a determination which will affect her whole life, she ought to consider attentively the nature and extent of the obligations which she will contract. 
She ought to examine her motives and disposition in order to ascertain whether she is attracted to a more perfect life by the sole desire of pleasing God and answering his call, or by some natural consideration which lurks within her soul, and which only a strict search will enable her to perceive, end quote. Okay. Now, what I thought about when I read that was Maria von Trapp and the Sound Sound of Music. Remember? Yeah. She she did not want to leave that convent. No. But why was she in the convent? She just wanted... She wanted to hide. She she wanted the security. The security. She wanted a safe place. She just wanted to be there. Yeah. And the mother superior said, no. This is not like for this you. is not your hiding place. This you is know? not. This is not for you. Yeah. Right. I mean. So I mean, I. So I. I mean, we can say that the convent is the best place to, to be, be. Which sure it and is. And I know there's many a married woman who laments the fact that why didn't I, I join joined the convent? <laughs> you know, the yeah. best place to be mm-hmm. because that's not your cross. Yeah. This is. You know, when you know, I, you know what's funny is I do I have those thoughts like most oh, all women. your sisters have said it. Why didn't I join the convent? But you know, you you want to join the convent now, yeah, because <laughs> things are. I'm talking about myself yeah, here when yeah. I say this. I'm not saying this directly to anybody but myself. You want to join the convent now because things are tough for you, right? Right. And it would be easy just I to need, s- just, go away and be a nun and pray all like, day, oh, and gosh, you know. Okay, all I but you pray. didn't. Nobody bothers me. But you didn't want to. Floor. You didn't want to be part of the comment when life was all, you know, you're young and free and da da da. Everything's gravy. Everything's gravy. You know, that's when it's hard to give your life to God. Yeah. Not now when I'm, I mean, I'm not even old, but my life is hard right now. I will say it's hard right now. So it is easy to sit there and go, I should have been a nun, you know. Okay, but you should have been a nun when your life was easy and you had everything to give up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when you're young and free. But I, yeah. But, I mean, then it's a real cross. Right. But, I mean, we can say, the one thing, this is to, and this is going back to your dad. That And again, there, the, there, I just want to say that's my personal opinion about my own life. Because I, I forgot to mention this when we were talking about your dad. But, yeah. there, but if you ever say the saying, what if, oh, if only, or if, if only. only right? I had done this. or uh, that People tend to do that yeah. when it comes to death and suicide. If only I hadn't gone out. If only, only. I'd have done this. If only I'd have said this. Right. If only, if only, if only. Right? I mean, you can use that same thing for going to the convent. If only I'd have if done this. It. Take those words, if only. Out of your vocabulary. Out of your vocabulary and don't ever say them again. <laughs> because it is what, what it, it is. What it is. Yeah, you know, replace if only with it is what it is. You could not have stopped this. And that's the yeah. other thing I'm, I, I wanted to talk about, that suicide too. You can't stop it, you know? I but, even had a secular doctor tell me that. That you can't stop it. Yeah, when I was really struggling with it afterwards, I went to our family doctor, my our family doctor. Yeah. And this is my family doctor since we were babies. New dad, yeah. right? And he said, he's looked at me and he said, Holly, there, he said, I'm going to tell you this right now. There is nothing you could have done that would have stopped him. Yes. If he wanted to do it and he's determined, he would have done it. Right. Like, cause you know, you play the game. Well, what if I wouldn't have, what if I was at home? What if I, because you know, my sisters had laughed and they were like, what if we didn't go to soccer? What if we didn't do this? What if we didn't do that? You play that game. Oh, the what if game is huge and it's huge huge about everything. Yeah. Uh, You know, everything. I mean, especially huge about suicide. And so he just said, you know, if they wouldn't have went to soccer, he just would have done it the next day. Yeah. Like, you know, you know, it's not. Right. Right. You you cannot play the what if game. And and you have to Or the if only game. I just want to put this out there because I forgot to say this. That God gives life and God's ultimately God stops life. Right. Whether it's by your own hand or whatever, Whatever. he has allowed it. And you have to, you have to register that in your head. Yeah. Yeah. You know. But anyway, we're talking about the convent. Yes, sorry. We <laughs> segued. <laughs> we segued. Okay, so, quote, Sometimes females of a lively imagination and of ardent feelings, trusting too much to a fit of momentary fervor, excited in their soul by some solemn circumstance, consider the desire of perfection which they experience as a call to the religious life, and take imprudent steps which involve them in painful difficulties for the remainder of their life, end quote. Okay. So, so, uh, what did you just read there? 
I read the quote. <laughs> the quote. Okay. Basically, holiness can be found in matrimony just as, as much, much as it can be found in the, in the convent. convent. Right? Is it, did you just read that? I think I might have blanked out. Uh, you that. might have blanked out. You weren't listening to me. <laughs> I got my notes and you were reading it. And, and I then was she wasn't listening. Well, it's bit, you know, it's talking about they get this momentary fervor and this excitement in their soul. Right? Well, so, okay, you know what I was thinking? I think, did you did you skip a part? No. I'm sure, you, I think you did. But anyway, is that number four? That was three. Oh, that was three. Oh, I'm all befuddled. She's all befuddled. But anyway, okay, so this momentary excitement that happens. Has yeah. anybody seen the movie, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? I haven't seen that one, no. Well, I haven't seen it really either. But I, so, somebody was watching it once. And, and I walked part? into the room, and it was a baptismal scene. You know, it was a, a Baptist baptismal mm -hmm. scene. They're out in... The know, river? Out in the river. And they're like, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And they're like, come to the... Bat and and I th I'm, what I'm gathering is these guys are outlaws. And, and they get swept up in the fervor of the baptism? or Not swept, the fervor, yes. but the... They're like, they're like, baptize wow. me, save me, you know. And they, they like all in the whole excitement of the moment. Mm -hmm. They're all, I feel the Lord, you know. And they go because somebody's wailing in the river. <laughs> and they go in and they get baptized. And then as soon as it's over, well, that was nice. Let's move on, <laughs> you know. <laughs> like, and that's what the book is talking Dang about. about right? Is to be careful of that momentary yes, when you're you, swept when up. Yeah, you get this. zealous and you get excited and you're like you're all in for five minutes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It has to be a little bit more than that. And it kind of goes on there. Okay. Read it? So, quote, it is not ordinarily by sudden and impetuous emotions that the will of God is manifested to us. The aim of our life and the secret of our destiny are not revealed at once to our mind. The action of God and of his grace is almost always gentle, slow, and as it were, imperceptible, rising like a germ, then unfolding itself and steadily increasing, end quote. Yeah. Yeah. So sl slowly unfolding. Unfolding. Like it doesn't come in like in like a freight of, train, like a freight train, like and then just passion. as fast as it comes in, it leaves. Yes, like you yeah. have to be weary, weary, weary of those excitable moments, and you have it had like this germ that's, and I know if you look back on your life, you'll say, you'll you have these little moments in your life, which is like watering the mustard seed that's mm -hmm. going to come forth. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's and that's the firm and the consistent. It's the slow. Like you, when you come in like a ball of fire, you go out really fast. Like you've yeah. seen those fires, you've seen a blazing fire and how fast yeah. it can go out. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So when we're, what they're talking about, if you have a religious vocation, to not get swept up. Right. In, in the emotional, you know, like like say sometimes maybe a nun will come visit. Yeah. And you'll be like, oh, oh my gosh, I want to be a nun. You know, yeah. You'll get swept up in the, yeah. the oh, this sounds like, you know. Yeah. Well, really you're just in awe, world. too, of them. You're just in awe, right? Yeah. No, it's a slow and persistent, um, not, I'm not going to say feeling, but, but little, you know, God drops little clues to you. you. It's you're moving inch by inch towards yes. it. Yes. Right? So... Okay, so, quote, it is also developed by external events which God ordains and causes to happen in a manner suited to his designs. Sometimes, however, to try our resolution, he permits obstacles to obstruct our way and thus gives us occasion to display the fortitude with which he has endowed us, end quote. And you know what? That is actually the perfect little pit, little writing right there for exactly what we're talking about ash wednesday and this ice storm that's coming exactly okay that say, is exactly what we're talking storm, about right so there. sometimes however to try our resolution he permits obstacles to obstruct our way and thus gives us occasion to display the fortitude mm -hmm. which with with which he has endowed us mm -hmm. so god doesn't want god wants you to love him with such a fervor and such a fortitude that nothing will stop you. Right. Right? That you're willing to that you're hover, willing overcome obstacles. Any obstacle right. put in your way. Yes. You know, he he is testing you. Yes. That is, he's testing you and he wants you to show him. Right. 
that's how much you love him. And we have, I have another one of my little favorite sayings, you know, uh, evil does the work, work of, of God. God. Yes. Right? Just as Caiaphas murdered Christ. Christ. Yeah. So when you get these obstacles and you get this, you know, when it, when your waves and when your path is not paved, paved with glory, glory and rainbows and lollipops on each side, you have to, you know, and it's just hedged with thorns. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's... That's what's fortifying you and strengthening you, you and, you know, and all the bad things that come your way, the evil. Right? And I mean, because the thing is, is like, if you think about it, um, God is, God could be strengthening you for something bigger, bigger, something bigger, you know? you know? So you have to go with the grace. You have to flow with what God is. Yes. You know? Mm -hmm. And I mean, if you try to fight it, you try to stop it. I mean, yeah, no. And, you know, like, I mean, this Lent 2008, mm -hmm. we had to overcome some pretty big obstacles. And, and also, let it, you know, I want it said again, I know I've said this before in a podcast. It was actually my sister that gave me this great direct quote. And I don't even know what book it was from. Uh, my Daily Bread. Sorry, that was, a, I'm pretty sure it's from My Daily Bread. Um, God, ne God will never give you anything that he doesn't think you can overcome. Or St. Paul, my grace is sufficient, sufficient for grace. thee. <laughs> yeah. You know, God will never. He's yeah. not going to give you something you can't handle. He knows what you can handle. Right. So if you've been given a cross, if you've been given a trial, God knows you're strong enough mm -hmm. to overcome it. So you have to believe You have to believe in that, though. And sometimes, you have to, sometimes he wants us to love him through the darkness. Yes. Right? Yeah. Like what was that other? What was that other? I mean, it's easy. It's easy. It's easy to love them with miracles. With miracles. Yeah. Right? What does it say? The world does not revolve around, around miracles. miracles. Yeah. It's easy to love God when you're, you know, well, they say it's easy when everything but, is coming up really, roses. When and... everything's coming up roses, who's the first person you forget? God. God. Yeah. You know, like really. it's really kind of sad. It but... is sad, and I, I can even think of it in my own life, you know, when things are going great, and I'm just, like, chugging along, and da-da-da-da, and, you know, you say your prayers, and, of course, and, you know, but you don't, but then, you know, one bad thing happens, and you're on your knees begging for yeah. relief. Yeah. What is that, you know? Yeah. Like, I, I'm talking about myself, you know, and then you're like, well, that's when you really get serious about praying? Yeah. What's wrong with you, Holly? Come on. Yes. You know, like... Yeah, and so that's why God gives us a steady dose. That's yeah. why he gives us the glory. He gives us one lesson, one Lent. And then he gives us a following, mm -hmm. you know, le lesson the next Lent. And then, yeah. you know, I mean, it's, I guess we're not just subject to lessons at Lent. No, I mean, they happen all through. The <laughs> they happen all through the time. But, I mean, in my life, they've... They really ramp up at They Lent. really ramp up They really, they, they sting a little. <laughs> they... they they come home with the sledgehammer. Yeah. You know. So. so. Well, anyway, so I think we uh, will leave it there for today. And I really hope that um, you ladies enjoyed this episode. And um, as always, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the uh, comments below. And uh, we try. <laughs> I know I said we were going to create a YouTube account and we'd answer the questions. Or we'd respond to some of you ladies. and But I want you to know that even when we don't respond, I can't speak for my mom, but I do read every comment. Yeah. I read every comment on every video. And I I even come back after a while and see if there are any new ones. And and uh, I should respond. But um, I know there was somebody that was actually, when we were talking about my DIY well, you did a little, oh, hey, blog. you did a little DIY. We should she, talk about, mention that. Well, she wanted the link to my blog, and I never came back, but I am going to come back. I'll just, maybe I'll just start commenting as my YouTube channel. What do I care? What you do know? you care? What do I care? <laughs> if you, go, you guys can watch my DIY videos if that interests you. If you want to know but how to cricket, go ahead. I did do, I did do a little DIY, little shorts. It's, I had to break it into a two-parter because I didn't realize that YouTube shorts were only 60 seconds. So please make sure that you ladies watch it. <laughs> part one and then part two, they're labeled. So you watch part one and then part two. But it was just a neat little idea. We always did the bean jar the Lenten bean jar in our family as kids. My mom would put out a jar and every time we did something good, we got to put a bean in the bean jar. And then on Good Friday, my mom would make this big bean soup. And um, with all your sacrifices. Funny thing though, funny thing though, 
there always seem to be a lot of beans in the soup, but I don't remember <laughs> being that good. Sometimes <laughs> My mom, enough. I think, supplemented a little bit. Of Sometimes <laughs> there's not enough beans here. <laughs> well, and I was thinking that when in the video, when I filled up the beans in yeah. the bean jar, I'm like, that's a lot of good deeds and a lot of sacrifices. <laughs> but anyways, I put my own little spin on it. This year, I came up with something extra yes. fun uh, that we, I... I never did that. My mom like, never did the part that I the shared in the video, beans. but I thought it would be fun if you... You, well, and you'll see in the video if you watch it you take out the good deeds and sacrifice card and we have the free printable it's in the link i'll include the link on this video too um and then you put in a little card that says he is risen alleluia and then holy saturday when you get back well it won't be holy saturday anymore if you're going to midnight mass it'll be easter sunday but easter sunday after you get back from midnight mass you fill it up with jelly beans and then the kids wake up and they see the jelly beans in the jar instead yeah. of the beans. Yep, all and, their uh, sacrifices have turned, have turned into good fruition. Have, <laughs> have turned into glory. <laughs> it's turned into glory and they get jelly beans Easter morning. So I thought that was a nice little, because you know, you know, the secular world, they have the Easter bunny and that's fine. They can have that. And we have our good little Catholic traditions over here and um, we have jelly beans. <laughs> We have beans and jelly beans. <laughs> I'm just teasing. But no. We have bean soup. We have bean soup. And I love that bean soup on Good Friday. I almost feel bad because I do love it so yeah. much. And it's Good Friday. But um, so, yeah, check out that little short. And um, I will link the description or I will link the printables to yes, us. Yes, because it's never too early to start your children, children learning to sacrifice. Yes. Yes. So if they don't learn it as children, it comes really hard as adults. adults. Yeah. So I hope that you all have a very blessed Lent. We, of course, will be back next week. But um, have a blessed week. And as always, may our Lord bless you and our Lady guide you. And St. Teresa, pray for us. Pray for us. <laughs>